Greetings, Japan fans. In today's show, we are going to be looking at part two of emotional fitness for leaders. My shoe, arigatou gozaimasu, and welcome back to the 10th year of the Leadership Japan series. And I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Carnegie Tokyo franchise owner, president of Dale Carnegie Tokyo Training, and the three time best selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, and my new book. Stop wasting money on training in Japanese. Training de okane o muda ni suru no wa yamimasho is now available on Amazon. This podcast brings insights, examples, and experience about leading in Japan. And trust me, it is different here. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Lipsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Lipsyn, who Unlike many other podcast hosts, have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on iTunes. Monday is the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesday is the Presentations Japan series. Every second Tuesday, the Business Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesday is the Sales Japan series. Thursday is the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Friday is the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturday is Japan's top business interviews. Before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is It's a piece of cake. Asa meshi mai. Asa meshi mai. Ah, it's going to be so easy. Asa meshi mai. Asa meshi mai. This is going to be just a cakewalk. It's going to be so easy. We'll, oh, we'll sail through this. Asa meshi mai. Asa meshi mai. Asa meshi mai. This is episode number 482. And today, we, as I said, we're looking at Emotional Fitness for Leaders, part two. In part one, we looked at Dr. Emily Anhalt's research with 100 leaders and 100 psychologists. She identified seven factors which measure how fit we are in this sphere of mental health. And we covered the first three. Learn your emotional triggers and biases. Understand the emotions of others and find comfort in discomfort. Today, we will continue with the last four points. Number four, foster a safe space of connection. Psychological safety as a term has popped up over the last couple of years. We all need a space where we can feel we can be ourselves, where we can relax and let our guard down. This could be within the family and circle of close friends. Here is the rub. Often as leaders, we are too busy working to really develop family relationships and deep friendships. Divorce rates are at about 50% in the West. A lot of this is due to the time being devoted to the work being disproportionate to the time being devoted to those closest to us. We are constantly sacrificing family and friends for work projects. I put my hand up for this one. I am in permanent imbalance, trying to get the balance right. We need friends, hobbies, interests outside the mainstream of our work tasks. Working in Japan can also add a layer of complexity because we are often away from our friends we grew up with and our colleagues we used to work with back at home. We need to make the time and make the effort where we are right now to fix this because in the long term, it is not good for us to be isolated. Number five, bounce forward from failure and setbacks. Being positive is a good thing. We can see failures not as failures, but as our opportunity to grow and learn. Except we don't do that. Instead, we beat ourselves up and we keep playing the video repeat reel in our mind of the disaster or the failure which we were responsible for. 
This impinges on the work in front of us. It occupies our thoughts and distracts us from what we need to be doing. It can also rock our confidence to keep moving forward. Our world of possibilities becomes smaller. We take less risk, we shrink in confidence, and we don't actually bounce back or forward. One of the keys to recovery is to block out the worry aspect about what happened in the past. As we have seen, we cannot remove the memory or the pain. That just keeps popping up, whether we like it or not. What we can do is to not allow ourselves to worry about it. Being unhappy about something which happened in the past is one thing. Actually worrying about it is another. So when those unhappy memories pop up, just acknowledge what happened and move on without allowing it to trigger any feelings of depression or worry. Note it, but don't worry about it. That was then. It is in the past. Times have changed. And this is a new world compared to then. And I have moved on. Find out more. We come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public programs, but we also do custom-made in-house classes. Now, we do them in our super safe classroom, we do them live online, and we do them in Japanese, and we do them in English. Today's show is being brought to you by on the 14th of October. We're doing Winning with Relationship Selling, Buy Relations, Build a Trust, Have the Credibility, know all the proper elements of the sales cycle. This is what you need to be successful in sales, and this is what this course covers. On the 22nd of October, we do our Dale Cunney course, our flagship course. It might be you want to be a better communicator. Tons of opportunity to be a better communicator practice in this course. It might be to expand your comfort zone and be able to step up and take on new responsibilities, volunteer for projects, Become the leader that you need to be. There are many elements to this course, but it is a breakthrough program. This is something that when people do this course, they tell me, often I hear this, this course changed my life. Think about that. This course changed my life. That's a huge statement. There's got to be a lot going on here for that to happen. And there is. Brilliant program. On the 2nd of November, we'll be doing high impact presentations. This is all about persuasion power. It's about repetition, it's about lots of coaching, it's about video review, about two instructors. It's about very, 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 very concentrated form over two days to get massive results and massive improvements. Definitely need that program. Our website is www.dale.co.jp. You can email me at greg.story at dalecunny.com. If you like learning by watching videos, then we have over a thousand for you there at Tokyo Japan Dale Kani TV on YouTube. Get my best selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, the Bible for selling in Japan, and Japan Business Mastery, as well as my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's a premier business show in Japan, comes out Mondays. Fridays, we have Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders in Japan from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Terebi Show. Don't forget, you can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com Welcome back. Number six. Express needs, feelings, and feedback. It might be a generalization, but that doesn't mean it isn't true to say that for men, expressing feelings and needs and seeking out feedback goes against the grain. I grew up in macho Australia, so the strong, silent type was the ideal model for a man. If you had needs, you sorted out for yourself and took care of them without relying on others. 
any feelings you had were to be kept out of sight and never shared. If you did share, your rivals would despise you, your bosses wouldn't trust you, and your team wouldn't follow you. Feedback was always negative in those days, so no one was happy to receive any. Business is different today, and the hero boss is a relic from the past because technology and speed have made things much more complex. I tell my 20-year-old son to not be like dad and instead ask people for support and help and don't imagine you have to do it all by yourself like I did. Sharing feelings is a tricky one. I think we have to be very careful who we share our feelings with and how we express them. Find people you can trust and to whom you can open up to. Expressing the fact you don't see yourself as being perfect as a boss is a healthy idea. We can still be the boss and recognize we are still a work in progress and our team will appreciate the honesty and vulnerability. Feedback can be painful. The issue is very few people are well trained in how to give feedback. So we are constantly being hammered by amateurs who have no idea what they are doing. Keep that in mind next time you receive negative feedback. Try to pass out what you can learn from it, discard the rest, and ignore the invective. Number seven, implement what you have learned into your daily life. Ah, this is only as easy as it sounds. We are creatures of habit. And we all love change. The problem is, we love change in others. We want the organization to change. The boss to change. The clients to change. The team to change. But we want to stay exactly as we are. I have thousands of pages of notes I've accumulated over the years. But how much of what I learnt did I actually implement into my work and life? Occasionally, I will learn something or get a hint about a way of doing things, and I will make the effort and the time to make it happen. The rule should be, find the Pareto principle of the Pareto principle and find the 4% of things which will give you the 64% of the results you are after. We can't do everything. But just concentrating on the 4% will help us to go a long way to improving 64% of what we're doing. If you have more bandwidth, then get busy with the 20% of actions, which will bring in 80% of your required results. These seven ideas about improving our mental health provide a good framework for us to get busy with. Let's keep this list handy, and every day, Let's look at implementing one on the list. That would be a good use of our time, wouldn't it? Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Take what you found valuable immediately. Put into action because idea application is what makes winners winners. Be one of them. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. Nippon.